hello and welcome back. And that's right, as the title card says, what is SSD and let's be more appropriate, should you even bother? SSD caching is one of those things that a lot of the brands are really shoving in your face recently, aren't they? They're just going, oh my God, we do SSD caching. Look at us, we've got SSD caching bays, everyone. Use SSD caching. Why aren't you using SSD caching? And a number of people that have just utilized the network attached storage device to get away from Google Drive, Dropbox and stuff like that have gone, whoa. What is it? Because it's, you know, it's, it's an understandable thing. A lot of people get these ideas thrown at them of what they should do. And YouTubers like myself will just go, oh my God, this is so cool. So let's talk about SSD caching. Let's talk about what it is. Let's talk about who uses it. Let's talk about whether you even need it. What are the pros? What are the cons? What are the types? So let's get straight into it. SSD caching has existed in one form or another for a long time. It isn't just about network attached storage devices and servers. Indeed, one form of caching SSD or not utilizing just memory will probably exist in the device that you are watching this on right now. Caching um, in the form of network attached storage and data storage in general is applied with the idea that when you get a device like this, and this has got hard drives inside it, this has got four hard drives inside, hard drives Although they give you great capacity and generally, apart from the last few day, uh, few months of cheer, um, hard drives generally give you quite good value for money in terms of overall capacity. Now, as good as all that sounds, it has to be said that hard drives, these big mechanical disks things, that when they're being operated and being read from on cylindrical disks, aren't the quickest. Now, Another thing that came out in the last few years, of course, is SSDs. SSDs have come along and blown everyone away. They've existed for more than a decade, and ultimately what they do is give tremendous performance. But they give tremendous performance several times that, you know, three, four, five times out of hard drive sometimes. They give you all of this performance, but their overall capacity is much, much smaller, and their price tag is ever so much higher. So... There had to be a way to take advantage of both, and that is how SSD caching came about. I hate seagulls. Now, SSD caching allows you to have a large array of hard drives all in together in a raid, a big old storage pool, and then a smaller area of SSDs, one or two or more combined together, are then used in conjunction with them. They're combined together running simultaneously, you can take advantage of the faster access times on the, on, on data that lives on those SSDs, and there, then the data that lives on the hard drives, those slower hard drives there with a larger amount of space, that can be accessed if and when you need it because of its less, less importance in your home or business environment. Now, a lot of people talk about SSD caching and SSD tiering like they are the same thing. They are not. Very, very different from one simple reason. SSD tiering or tiered storage is when you have SSDs, I'll use this side, is when you've got an area of hard drives such as these here, and then you have an area of SSDs like these, and with tiered storage, as data is being written to the device, Typically onto the hard drives, the more frequently accessed data, be it for video editing, surveillance, whether it's being used for OSs, whether it's being used for just general metadata, the most frequently accessed files are moved, keyword there, moved onto the SSDs. And next time when that data is required, they are pulled from the faster SSDs. That's what tiering is, but caching is different. In its truest form when it comes to accessing data, SSD caching is about having a copy of those files on the SSD, not moving them, a copy of them. So a, a file exists in two locations, not all the data, just the most frequently accessed data. And when you're interacting with the NAS or any kind of server system, really, the more frequently accessed data that's being demanded the most will then be accessed from the SSD. But the, again, it exists on both of them. That's the biggest difference between caching and tiered storage. There's a little bit more to it that we're going to talk about in a moment. But again, don't get those two concepts mixed up. Now, when it comes to caching, uh, SSD caching on a NAS, if you are going to consider utilising, and again, later on at the end, we'll talk a little bit more about who does and why. When it comes to SSD caching, it's worth remembering there are actually different 
kinds. So the reason I've got these bits locked out here on the table is we've got the hard drives here. We're going to put them there so you can see them. We're going to use these SSDs here. These are the cache. So again, these hard drives would normally be in the bays of here and the SSDs would be in the base of that. It doesn't have to be that way, but more modern NAS, it kind of works that way. And then you've got your client computer, where you're using a laptop, using a PC, or there's multiple users in the environment. So let's open this up. We'll leave that there. So when it comes to SSD caching, the first most common and most affordable version of caching is known as read-only caching. It's also sometimes referred to as write-around caching, but read-only caching. They're very, very similar concepts. So say this laptop here is sending 10 gigabytes of data. It's communicating them to the NAS. So again, we'll ignore that NAS there. These are the hard drives in that array. So it sends data, but it doesn't touch the SSDs. It sends the data directly onto the hard drives. It sends that data. Then maybe every day it's going to send more data, but occasionally it's going to pull data from the SSDs because it's going to keep asking for data from the NAS where the hard drives are. And as it notices the more frequently accessed data, although sometimes it's going to be reading and writing from just the hard drives, the minute the NAS starts to realize that some of this data is the same data over and over again, it's going to do that thing where it puts a copy of it over here. And therefore, as this client machine is accessing the brand new data, occasionally it wants the frequently accessed old data, and then boom, it will pull it from the SSD instead. Now, the reason it's called read-only cache is because the client systems cannot alter this data. They don't have live access. Um, they can't um, edit it. They've got the modification to it. The only data that ever, the only interaction this ever has is when data is sent to it from the hard drive. There will also be periodic deletion as data falls out of favor. So as the capacity starts to fill, then it will get rid of the most um, less frequently accessed data overall and it will get rid of it but it doesn't get rid of it completely all it does is get rid of the copy because the original file is still on your hard drives and read only cache doesn't require any kind of parity or fallback or safety nets or whatever on the ssds because there's always two copies of the data there it's also the most affordable you can get away with just a single ssd it's the entry level ssd cache but it should be mentioned that it only really improves things one way and it still requires the system to learn what's the most important data that you're utilizing now, next one up is write back SSD. Now, this is a form of write caching. A lot of people refer to this as write only caching as well, but we're just going to stick with the, the fact that it is write back caching. Now, in this scenario, when the client computer user is interacting with the NAS, the cache is incredibly important. It lives there in the middle, and the data is sent directly to the SSDs. It doesn't go straight to the hard drives, and then as each block is completed, it's then transferred over to the hard drives. Again, when you are accessing the data from the client, you are accessing the hard drives, but it should be mentioned that when you are writing data, you are writing to the SSDs and then the system copies it over to the hard drives. And I say copy, it is moved because it will be destroyed. It doesn't maintain a copy of the data there. And in a lot of cases, it is highly recommended that you have some form of parity. So you have two drives in a RAID configuration. The reason being that during the write operation, if something goes wrong or the system fails or the SSDs break, there's every possibility that because the data hasn't moved into your main storage area that has RAID inside, that you'll lose that data. So do bear that in mind. Write back or write only um, caching is used, but again, it's mainly a, a write performance um, uh, improving endeavor and not as good in terms of business and archival data and regular operations as that of read only or write around data. And finally, there is write through data. Now, write through isn't just about NASA, it's probably one of the most commonly used cache. Uh, systems, even though it's not generally referred to it in this fashion. Now, write through is often described in two different ways, but they amount to the same thing. Either data is written from the client computer as it is uploaded to both storage systems simultaneously, or data is passed through the SSD onto the storage media. Regardless of which way you put it, it is the being, uh, data is being compiled onto them simultaneously. Whether it's boop, boop, every single time, going through or sending them together. Now, yes, 
that is a dual operation there it has to be said but remember you are then creating two lots of copy data onto them and when you are pulling data you can still pull data from the ssds it's not kept there long term it can't really because again remember ssd for ssd caching will be smaller amounts but write through caching is generally more utilized um, across desktop systems and smaller pc computer systems for typical caching in terms of nas they don't really break down into all these individual read-only, write-only type cache options. They're out there, and QNAP is one of the brands out there that really do funnel them all down. But in terms of reading and write caching, a standard read-write cache gives you the benefits of that last one there, and of course, the read-only cache as well. As you're accessing the data, you are pulling the more frequently accessed data as well, but also during the write operations, you can see the cache data going nuts there on the cache management panel on all of those different NAS devices. But how much cash do you actually need in order to take advantage of it? When it comes down to it, just telling you you need SSDs isn't enough. There's a lot of SSDs out there, and they're all varying interfaces and speeds. So first, let's talk about the, the amount that you're going to need. So generally, and there's no strict rule out there. You can break it down mathematically, but because of different hard drive RAID arrays and capacity drives and the number of drives at all, it can be very difficult to nail it down. I personally will always utilize whatever my uh, capacity limit is in terabytes, I will have 10% of that value as SSD cache. So for every 10 TB, I want one TB of SSD cache. Bear in mind, if you're gonna take advantage of uh, write-based cache mechanics, I generally would recommend that you have two SSDs. So again, you're gonna to have to double up on that capacity. So if you need one TB, you're gonna need two one TBs to make sure you've got that RAID support there. Um, I mentioned interfaces there because it is, of course, worth highlighting. Not not all SSD caching in 2021-2022 is done with M2 NVMEs. A lot of it is done with traditional SATA SSDs that go inside the media bays. Now, a lot of people do query whether using NVMe SSDs is much better than using SATA SSDs for caching because despite the fact that SATA SSDs give you between 5 and 550 megabytes per second, and NVMe SSDs can give you three to 4,000 megabytes per second in PCIe Gen 3 times 4 Can your NAS actually take advantage of that additional speed in that caching? And the answer is yes and no, which really isn't helpful. Um, when it comes to write activity, and indeed read activity when you're interfacing between your laptop your computer your whatever and the nas the connection the interface between the nas and the client system will give you some idea about the maximum throughput of the data being sent through yes the internal performance of your system if you're using a cache where data is being moved between hard drives and ssds for overall system benefits yes the nvme is going to give you better performance overall oh, sorry nvme by a decent margin but externally, you, the end user, the differences you're going to feel in responsiveness and latency are going to be very, very small indeed, especially if you're connected via a 1GBE or even 2, 3, 4 um, 1GBE connections um, from your client system to the NAS. SATA SSDs, they're already going to be maxed out at the right potential um, of uh, SSD caching with right caching onto those SSDs in a point where NVMEs, when you utilize them, just won't be plain enough. They're just gonna be bottlenecked and you'll see no difference between them externally. The true benefit of NVMEs as SSD cache over SATA SSDs is in the internal operations and the databases that run within the system. But even then, it's not as cut and dry as that because a number of users will you know, see a NAS like this, the DS920 that's got two NVMe bays inside and go, cool score two, um, three times four gen SSDs inside there. These are knocking out something like three, three and a half thousand megs each. That's incredible. However, a lot of the NVMe slots on a lot of modern NAS devices aren't actually PCIe gen three times four, those M2 slots there. The PCIe lanes that are available and the chipset of the NAS inside the CPU and the control and basically the general layout, the groundwork of the NAS system doesn't have enough a PCIe lanes available to give full bandwidth to each of those M2s inside. And the ultimate end game there would be that if you put um, a three to 4,000 megabytes per second SSD in those slots, 
they will end up being bottlenecked to one or 2,000 megs max anyway. So although yes, there are benefits to using NVMe SSDs for caching over SATA SSDs, those benefits are all gonna be internal, that you're not gonna see much of it externally unless you massively saturate those, um, you're able to saturate 10 GPU connections and higher, and also there's every possibility that unless you're using a particularly advanced Xeon, Intel Core, or high-end AMD processor, that the M2 NVMe slots on the NAS you might be looking at, if you're looking at Celera or even some of the Realtek ones that support SSDs, there's every possibility that PCIe lanes inside are already going to bottleneck those NVMe's to, to end with. So who is SSD caching actually for? Should you utilize it? Is it even in your interest to adopt it? Well, if you use databases of information for your business, be it for website, web images, thumbnails, indexes, that sort of thing to run your site, email servers that have got lots of information being accessed, shared drives between active users where it's a database of information, of client information, CRM, CMSs, you will benefit from uh, NVMe SSD cache and SATA SSD cache. You will. You won't be able to measure it that much and the gains are made gradually over time as the system learns about the more frequently accessed files with more immediate benefits in write caching activity being visible, but you will feel the benefits. However, if you're a multimedia user for Plex Media Server, or if you're just streaming over DLNA, if you're a photo video editor, the you know the input output gains there are going to be very, very small and barely noticeable. And again, you will be throttled by external network connections to a point where the NVMe or SATA SSD caching won't even be noticeable anyway. SSD caching is a great thing, but it's not for everyone. And I kind of wish brands would stop shouting in people's sodding face about SSD cache when I believe only around 20%, maybe 25% a push percent of users who buy network attached storage servers, rack mounts, desktop, whatever, will actually see the benefits. But this has been, what is SSD cache and do you even need it? If you enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. If you are interested in getting the right network attached storage solution for you and need a bit of a helping hand, use the free advice section over at NAS Compares. It is genuinely free. It's manned by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy, and we're there to answer your queries. We don't get paid. It's, it's completely just impartial advice we'll give you. We'll recommend a few stores, but again, shop where you like. There's a donate button. It'd be great if you use it. You don't have to, and we don't keep your email. It's as simple as that. Use it. It's there. What are you going to lose? Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time.